Last week at WWDC, Apple announced the new operating system for the iPad called iPad OS. All right, well, it's really just iOS 13, but with some exclusive features specifically made for the iPad. And so in this video, we're gonna go hands-on and see what's new in iPad OS. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. First up is the new and improved multitasking and slide over functionality. With multitasking, users can have two different applications open at the same time, but the difference now with the new update is finally being able to have multiple windows of the same app open as well. It's something that's been around a lot on other devices and platforms that users have been clamoring for. In SlideOver, users can now have multiple apps or windows of the same application open too, and you can easily switch between those apps and windows by sliding from left to right or swiping up just like you would to bring up your normal app switcher. Now you have a dedicated expose view for slide over apps too. Also, if you haptic touch on an app with multiple windows open, you can select show all windows to see what you have open for that window. It's all very useful stuff for sure. There's a new home screen in iPad OS, although really the only major difference is the ability to add the today view widgets directly on your home screen without having to actually slide from left to right to access it. This is a nice touch and it's one step closer to more customization options for the iOS home screen, but it's still pretty limited so far. Some apps got a pretty big upgrade as well, starting with Safari, which now offers desktop class browsing, which means when you use Safari on the iPad, you're always going to get the desktop version of a website instead of the mobile version. Websites will be scaled appropriately for the iPad's display and optimized for touch so that you can use your favorite web apps like WordPress, Squarespace, Google Docs, and Slack. Safari also includes 30 new keyboard shortcuts, improvements for tab management, and a new download manager so you can see just what you've downloaded. The Files app also went through some much needed change, making the file management system a little more robust than previous iterations. There's finally support for USB drives, external SSD drives, SD cards, and you can access remote SMB file servers right from within the Files app. There's a new column view available in the Files app as well that lets you preview your files just like you can do in Finder on the Mac. It even supports quick actions like markup, rotate, and create PDFs, so that you can do even more on your iPad right from the Files app. There are also new gestures and text editing features that really make scrolling through long documents and web pages, copying and pasting text, etc., a lot easier on the iPad. To scroll through long documents and web pages, you can actually now grab a scroll bar and drag it down or up, which is quicker than swiping, and selecting text can now be done by dragging your finger over it. You can select one word with a double tap, an entire sentence with a triple tap, or a whole paragraph with a quadruple tap. And you can now pick up the cursor and move it anywhere you need to with a simple drag, a gesture that's quicker than prior iOS 12 cursor movements. Apple added new gestures for cut, copy, and paste. You can pinch up with three fingers to copy. You can pinch down with three fingers to paste. To undo and redo, you can actually now use three finger swipes to the left and to the right. To make typing even easier on the iPad, Apple has added a new floating keyboard that enables one-handed typing. It supports Apple's new Quick Path swipe-based typing feature, which I absolutely love. You can enable the new floating keyboard by pinching in on the keyboard and dragging it anywhere on the iPad screen. The Apple Pencil also got a nice little update with some new features and improvements. One thing that you can do now is actually swipe up from the corner of the iPad to instantly take a screenshot and immediately begin annotating on that screenshot. There's also a new markup tool palette with quicker access to the tools that you use most, along with color palettes, shapes, an object eraser, and a new pixel eraser that removes any part of a stroke. There's also a new ruler tool designed to help you draw straight lines. The tool palette can be dragged anywhere on the screen so that you can customize how you work. And Apple is making the API available to developers so that the same familiar toolbar can be available throughout third-party applications. Finally, I do wanna to touch on two new features inside of iPadOS. The first one being Sidecar, which also requires users to have macOS Catalina installed, but will allow users to use their iPad as a secondary display for their Mac, either by extending your Mac's display or mirroring it. With this feature, you can use apps like Photoshop or Illustrator right on your iPad, and they'll also work with the Apple Pencil. We're gonna have a full video on this feature in the next couple of weeks, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video. iPad OS also introduces mouse support for the first time, allowing USB or Bluetooth mice to be connected to an iPad. 
Now this sounds great and it actually works pretty well, but unfortunately it's not considered a standard feature right now. And it's only available as an assistive touch option within the accessibility settings on your device. It's great that Apple is opening this up for those who have trouble using the touchscreen functionality on their iPad, but I do hope that they decide to open this up to everyone who might want to use a mouse on an iPad and implement this as a standard feature very soon. So let us know what you think of iPad OS in the comment section down below. What's your favorite feature and will you be trying out the public beta when it's released in the next month or two? Let me know in the comments down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.